Okay. It says live now, so we should be good to go. Cool. Pulling up the show notes. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and mute you guys real quick just so... Or if you, if you don't mind muting yourself, if you can, just so we don't have too much uh, background noise there. I think Paul's still coming okay. up. Is it okay? One sec. There we go. Cool. Sweet. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Sammy K. Powers, and this is the PHP Roundtable. This is a live podcast of developers discussing topics that PHP nerds care about. The ultimate goal of the podcast is to learn a little something from each other. We don't assume that anyone listening is an expert PHP programmer, so we'll try our best to fully explain the concepts that we're discussing so that even a complete newbie will have enough information to take their learning further with a good Google search. If you're listening live and want to be a part of the show, send a tweet to PHP Roundtable with your question, and we'll try to get your question answered if we can. Believe it or not, there's a lot more to PHP internals than occasional drama llamas showing up in the internals mailing list. In fact, PHP Internals is a lively community of really friendly and helpful people who keep Uncle PHP alive and well on the web. Today we'll discuss what's going on in PHP Internals and what PHP 7 is going to look like. We'll also talk about the GoPHP-EXT project and we'll discuss some ways that we can all get involved with it. Finally, by the end of this episode, we hope that you'll feel inspired enough to contribute to PHP Internals even if you don't even know C. So, that's our topic intro. Let's meet our panel, and in no particular order, I'm going to start off here with Joe Watkins, because this is the guy, he's the guy behind pthreads in PHP, PHP internals guy. What's up, Joe? Oh, still muted. Sorry. We'll have to come get used to unmuting and muting. <laughs> Maybe there's not a quick unmute there. Let me try to unmute you. Oh, no, I can't. Oh, there we go. Oh, you made it. Uh, no, no, no. There you are. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, man. That's cool. That's cool. This is your round two. You, you were in the PHP Internals discussion in episode five, and here you are again. So thanks for coming back. <laughs> Thanks for making this one at a reasonable time. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs> a little bit better than three in the morning. Yeah, that was um, rough. Yeah, absolutely. That was really rough. I could hardly talk. I said about four words. <laughs> so hopefully get more awards out of you in this episode. Hopefully. Yeah. So moving on to Paul, Grad, uh, Paul Dragunas, and he's the contributor to uh, PHP Internals, and he's a PHP.net guy and a PHP Fig member. Welcome, Paul. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on. And moving on to Lorna, Lorna Mitchell. She's a developer, author, and trainer. Thanks for coming on. Oh, you, I think you have like your. So Lorna was showing yeah, off. Yeah, there we. Yeah, there we go. I'm showing. I'm showing off my hardware, and turns out I actually can't work it. So <laughs> hi, nice to meet you. She's got a, a fancy mute uh, on her hardware, and then a fancy mute on her software. So if you get too double muted, that's going to be hard to click it back on again. <laughs> oh, so thanks again for joining. And then finally, Joe Ferguson. He is the host of the Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. Welcome, Joe. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So we got two Joes, um, so it's going to be hard to distinguish, but we got Joe Watkins and Joe Ferguson, so Joe F, Joe W. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to distinguish you guys here. Um, you guys have very distinctive voices, so that, that'll make it a little easier. So <laughs> it's great. So let's hop right into it. The number one excuse to not contributing to PHP internals um, is I don't know C. I hear that all the time. So to this, I'm just throwing that to anybody. Um, what is a what is a good response to that? Like, if somebody says, "I don't know C," is that really a good excuse to not contributing to PHP internals? No. <laughs> nope, not really. Actually, a lot of the things that happen are non C related. It's mostly discussions, RFCs, things like this. So you're not even hitting code. True that. Like, what what are some examples of of how someone could get involved not even knowing C? Well, the documentation, the website itself, all the scripts that generate documentation, all the scripts that run tests, the tests themselves, all of these things, the PHP, XML, stuff that you work with every day. So that's the majority of the work. Um, the majority of it is not actually seen, like Paul said. It's um, other things that everyone knows. Well, and the wider project has loads going on. You know, there's servers need looking after, there's bugs need 
triaging. Um, you, I hear a lot of appeals for help, but the community, when I meet general PHP developers, they will often say, yeah, I'm not qualified. Like, making PHP is for other people. And I just don't think that's true at all. Um, I don't know C, and I still manage to. I think I'm helping, at least interfere. True, true. So um, there's actually quite a few of you on the panel aren't, you wouldn't consider yourself C programmers, right? There's, I mean, there's people who have maybe dabbled in C, but like how many, how many of you would consider yourself like hardcore C pro programmers? Um, I started doing C programming a long time ago, and I actually was doing lots of kind of web work in C, and then one day I found this thing called PHP, and it was made my life easier, so I stopped doing HTML manipulation in C and started doing it in PHP. So uh, I kind of, it was just a natural fit for me because it looked like C, but it wasn't as difficult to use as C for doing web templating stuff. I consider myself a C programmer, that's what I use every day. So. I really don't. I have done some C in the past, but not for years and years. So now I reckon I can read extensions, I can compile them, but I don't really, I don't, I don't write C at all, and it's certainly not something that I do day to day. Once upon a time, I, I was a C developer, but that was like what Paul said years and years ago, and then I found this PHP thing, and that uh, kind of took over. Uh, I've, I've written some C since, nothing too crazy. Uh, I've written some, some low-level stuff that does uh, like hardware interactions on... Uh, small microcontrollers and that type of thing, but I could probably hack at some C, but it's not something that I would just go sit down and write, like I could sit down and write a, a web app or a command line console application in PHP. It's just you know, not my first language, for sure. Well, it's interesting that we have so many non-C programmers talking about contributing to PHP internals, which is, you know, if you don't know already, that PHP is written in C. So, um, I, that excuse that I don't know if C is not a good excuse to not contribute to PHP internals. In fact, it's not even a good excuse to not contribute to PHP source. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But um, do you guys, I'd like to hear some stories um, before we get too too much into this about how you guys got involved in, in internals, like as non-C programmers especially, but even if you are a C programmer, like how did, wh what was your first steps into the community and, and where has it taken you? Uh, well, I'll start, I suppose. Um, I, uh, I, I did get in as a C programmer. I wrote P-threads, and then I showed up and was just given karma. So, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wrote, you basically just wrote an extension, and, and then boom, you're, you're in, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Does anybody have a... Well, uh, sorry. Uh, I was on I was on IRC for a few, you know a good few years on the free free node server and it was quite quite early early on and then you know I found out that most of the PHP community were actually on Fnet so I kind of headed over there and realised that a lot of the contributors to open source PHP were actually on Fnet so I just started hanging around in there started getting my, you know getting a bit more deeper into the language which you know I, I guess again I because I came from C over to PHP, I was quite familiar. So I just started getting more familiar with the engine and the, the extensions and things like that. So just naturally started evolving in that area. Cool. Yeah, I'm not sure I would even now consider myself an internals contributor exactly. Um, I've been around for a long time. Um, I speak at conferences, so I meet a lot of the other contributors, the main language contributors there. Um, so I, I know the people, I guess, and I use the language, and if you believe in something, then you get involved, don't you? So um, that's kind of how I've come into it, and the Go PHP 7 stuff, obviously, is quite new, as we don't have PHP 7 yet, and that's really the first time, beyond doing things like test fest, maybe a little bit of extensions maintenance, this is the first time that I've been this close to the core of the community. Um, and not because I had any other excuses, really. Just, you know, I run user land open source projects, and I've always done kind of other education stuff. Now I feel like I'm bridging the gap between um, what's going on in internals and what we need to know out here in user land. 
I actually just recently, very recently, got started with the with the internals, uh, mainly because I was uh, helping with the Go PHP 7 extension stuff that Lorna mentioned, and uh, I was kind of like, hey, I can build Vagrant boxes to test PHP. So that was kind of how I got into it, and and that led me into figuring out how to do this on Windows or how to compile on Windows, and I went and looked at the documentation, and the docs kind of, they're, they're kind of blank on, on the Windows building, so it's just a link to the wiki. And I was like, hey, somebody should do about this. Somebody should do something about that, and somebody else was like, yes, you should. And I was like, oh, well, yeah, sure, I guess I can do that, and uh, then that's kind of how it just kind of volunteered myself to, to kind of do that kind of stuff, and I'm I am no Windows developer. I am no. I, I, you know, I am so far removed from the Windows world these days. It's, it's, it's not even. It, it's amusing that I'm the one that's, you know, doing this. And I think what it comes down to is giving back into like internals or to really any open source project. It's all about who, who is willing to do the work and who is willing to uh, step up and say, yeah, I can tell somebody or I can write this down and, and show somebody else how to do this thing. Yeah, well, you definitely need more people on the Windows front. Definitely, it's, it's lacking a lot. Yeah, especially leading up to PHP 7, which is coming out pretty soon. Um, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and there's a lot of really great efforts being put forward to kind of recruit new people and get more people inspired to contribute. And that's actually one of the the whole points of this episode is to try to inspire some to get more involved. Um, and we've got some specific points we'll go over. And but I wanted to add actually my two cents to this one because um, I. Uh, I started contributing to PHP internals as a user land programmer and this all started back in PHP Tech of last year and I met Elizabeth Smith and she showed me how to contribute tests to the to PHP source. That got merged in with a test I wrote and, and then uh, long story short there's a couple PHP roundtables that come up and we talk about contributing to PHP internals and I get more excited about it and we realize there's this missing piece that generating cryptographically secure random bytes is missing like a good implementation so um, talking with Anthony Ferrara and all kinds of really cool people from internals. I eventually kind of pushed forward this idea and then we create an RSC with this guy named Lee in UK and we've been poking around on this pull request and and today as of yesterday actually specifically the voting uh, ended for the RFC that me and Lee, Lee wrote and it passed unanimously with 41 yeses so um, random bytes and random int is going to be a new part of PHP 7 um, and that was me and Lee um, putting that in. And, and Lee's the, pro the C programmer. I'm not. So, again, I just want to reiterate that I don't know C is a bad, bad excuse for not contributing to P even PHP source, like the actual source code, because I went in there and just did, like, my scrickety stuff, and then they fixed it. So there's all kinds of people in the community. If you just push forward, like, stuff will get done. So um, that's kind of the whole theme of this whole thing. So. So now that we've had a little story time, I just want to kind of look at the, the current state of PHP 7, which is the, the, latest, the latest version of PHP that's going to be coming out very soon, um, and kind of looking at uh, the timeline that was proposed a while ago, March 15th, that was just uh, you know, a couple, couple weeks ago, two weeks ago, um, that was supposed to be the end of um, the remaining, uh, gathering the, the last kind of features that they wanted to push into PHP 7, and then th those could go into voting phase, and now it's been about two weeks, all those features have just ended their voting phase, those last ones like mine was <laughs> was like kind of procrastinating, so really it's at a feature freeze right now, like all the stuff that's going to go into PHP 7 is already voted on and ready to go, um, and now it's just a matter for the next three months we're going to be testing and implementing these features um, and that's where I think um, a lot of us can come in that maybe if you're listening in the car or you're watching on YouTube or whatever, uh, this is there's lots of opportunities for you to get involved in this three-month testing and implementa implementation phase. So um, before, um, I guess we could start talking about the GoPHP-EXT project because that's, um, that's something that, uh, that's kind of a new project. Uh, Lorna, do you want to talk about how you got involved with that and what that is and why it exists? Um, it's, <laughs> it's not like open source thing. Um, one day, Liz Smith sent me a tweet, and I, I don't have it handy, but it basically said, Lorna, help, brain dump, and a URL. And <laughs> in the URL was, uh, it was just a link to a gist, and Liz had basically written down everything that she thought that we, the steps that we needed to go through in order to get the extension space ready for 7. So to give you some context, um, PHP 7 is awesome, and one of the, the awesome things about it is it's 
faster, and the reason it's faster is they changed some stuff inside, and the stuff that they changed means that the extensions won't all work without a little bit of attention. Now, our extensions ecosystem is... Some extensions are fabulous, they're really well looked after, and we have a community of really excellent maintainers, but that isn't everybody, so we do have some pockets where those extensions haven't been updated for a while, and so we run the risk of going to seven and having users realize that actually even some of the core extensions are not ready. So updating extensions is not especially skilled. Um, you don't need to be a C developer at all. It's um, the idea that Liz had was that we could write down a set of steps, which is pick an extension that no one's looked at, can you compile it under various versions of PHP, um, rather than put together a box which makes it easy to try compiling under versions of PHP, um, does it compile or not, um, wh whether you're going to fix it or not doesn't matter, like, if you can fix it then great, it's just curly bracket language, but if not, at least we know that there is a problem and we need to look at it. Like, so I feel like when I do this, I've done a bit of legwork. One of our extension maintainers or internals contributors from using their very skilled time downloading and compiling code. We're also looking at running tests, improving tests, and the documentation coverage for all of those extensions. And so that's the idea, really, is that while the internals people have worked so hard on PHP 7, the wider community can all lend a hand and make sure the extension ecosystem is also ready to go. So you made a good point there of, um, you know, there's lots of extensions that need to be tweaked and touched because of the new PHP 7 engine and stuff like that. What, so I guess what a lot of stuff internally has changed for PHP 7, you know, making it more efficient and making it closer to HHVM as far as... Um, how fast it runs PHP scripts and things. Um, is that the main reason why there's such a big push for this, is to get all these extensions to run on the latest sort of efficient PHP version? Oh, it's that the PHP 5 extensions simply won't work on 7 without an update. It's more than, you know, we'd like to improve them all as well, and we'd like to take advantage of the new features, but the bottom line is your PHP 5 extensions will not work unless someone does something about it. And in open source, that someone is probably you. That's awesome. Yeah, and to answer your question, you know, what's the real push? You know, was it to make it more like hack or for speed issues? It was, um, we're, we're using this opportunity to break virus compatibility on a lot of, you know, a lot of luggage that we've been carrying for many years because we couldn't break BC on the 5 series. And we introduced 5 and we kept some things from 4 because we didn't want to upset too many people. So, um, we're using this opportunity to make necessary improvements. And the, one, yeah, again, like I said, one of the main reasons uh, we, are, we are making these improvements now is because we can break BC internally from a code perspective and externally, you know, getting rid of some nonsense that's been carrying around from PHP 4 or, or before that. So it's performance, but also the opportunity to break things because we, we're allowed. Cool. Then there's lots of things that broke on uh, internally. It seems uh, there's some breaking changes for the user land, but it seems like internally there's all kinds of stuff. So like Lorna mentioned, like it just a, a PHP five extension just won't run on PHP seven. So um, what um, I want to talk about um, where people can go actually to get more information on Go PHP seven. And so the website is actually gophp 7org slash gophp7-exe. And you're kind of wondering like why why not just have it goes straight to that when uh, the project when you do go PHP 7. I think the reason is because right now we're pushing to get extensions up to date on PHP 7, and then once that's all ready and go, uh, PHP 7 is launched, then the the main go PHP 7.org site will be, um, I guess, the flagship of pushing server maintainers to upgrade to PHP 7. Is that the idea? Yeah. So the, the idea is, is I'm familiar or I don't know exactly, but maybe old enough in PHP years is to remember the Go PHP 5 initiative, which um, was actually really successful and really helped people to upgrade from 4 to 5. It, was, it helped hosts to realize that they need to upgrade from 4 to 5. Um, and if you look at our usage stats now for PHP, we have an incredibly long tail. Um, you know, something like 75% of our users use unsupported versions of PHP. So bringing out 7 with changes is, is not 
um, going to help that. But I think Go Pippi Seven when Seven is released, we'll, we'll have to do a lot of education and we'll just do a lot of support for user land, people looking to upgrade, start that application. Seven. Um, the first thing, like the leading edge, is that none of the extensions work. So we ended up kind of leading with the extensions thing. But, but yeah, yeah, in a year's time, at straight go pitch p7.org will be chock full of good stuff. Um, it's just that, I mean, we're not going to be talking about the alpha yet. So um, I'm not writing them in my migration documents just yet. <laughs> So um, I don't know if everybody else is having this problem, but uh, Lorna, you're having a little bit of an echo. Is everybody else hearing that, or is it just me? Is everybody else is hearing. Okay, just want to let you know that there's a little bit of like a weird thing going on when you're when you're speaking, so it's a little difficult to understand what you're saying. But um, we'll come back to you because uh, maybe their connection will will, uh, will kick back in. Um, but I wanted to go over some specific connect, uh, some points that the GoPHP7 project has listed on the website. Anybody can chime in on this. Um, so one of the, the first ones it says is to get PHP extensions running out of the box when PHP 7 is released. So basically what we've already been talking about of trying to get all these core extensions to actually even work on PHP 7. And there's this thing called the extensions catalog, which is a wiki page on GitHub, and there's a link to it on the gophp7-ext website, where you have a catalog of all these extensions, the core extensions and pickle extensions, and it has a, a list of whether or not they, they work on PHP 7 or we're not... Um, sorry, I'm getting like some feedback. I don't know if that's me or does anybody else hear this? Sorry, I'm doing the sound check live here in front of everybody. everybody. <laughs> if I mute myself, let's see what happens. Oh, it was Lorna. Okay, your hardware is muted, but when I muted your software, it stopped. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Um, so um, I'm not blaming Lorna, it's just technical difficulties. <laughs> all right, so uh, this extension catalog has this big list of all these extensions, and um, so the big push for P Go PHP 7 is, um, is gathering information, like what works, what doesn't. Um, if you look at the wiki page right now, and you can find it on the website, there's, this, there's a lot of like, missing data there where we don't know whether an extension works or not. We don't know if an extension has a maintainer or not. So if, if someone just wanted to go through and see... Um, they wanted to add info to the sheet. How could somebody get started just kind of updating the sheet or this uh, wiki page? Um, I mean, it's on GitHub, right? So can you not just edit the just edit the page live on GitHub.com, or was that? To easy an answer. Well, like specifically, how, how would they gather that information? Like, if, if there was no information on a specific extension on how to say, um, does this extension work on PHP 7? How would I how would I determine that? It's Lord, it sounds like someone's like hoovering in the background of Lorna. Yes. <laughs> um, well, if it's not there, then uh, I would you know personally just go and run it yourself. Spin up a VM and, and test it and get and get results back. But some, you know that's that's what I would do. So somebody who's never done this before, like, um, is there a good entry point for being able to do that? I think the uh, I think the the box that Rasmus built, the PHP seven box that he built, and others have contributed to, is probably the best starting point for somebody who has never done any of this but wants to help contribute or or wants to try to help uh, get going because his tool. Uh, or his box comes with a lot of tools built that he's built specifically for PHP 7 development, and, and it's really easy to swap PHP versions. And it doesn't even have to be somebody, uh, you know, pulling down this box and say, "Oh, well, I'm going to go test this one extension." It's not just about extensions. That's what the big, uh, the Go PHP 7 extension initiative is. But kind of Rasmus is what, what what I've seen him say in a lot of different places. It's not just the extensions that need testing. It's also your code. It's framework authors. It's maintainers. It's it's open source maintainers. Mm -hmm. Uh, to be able to go test their code too, and, and other people can help with that as well. It's not just the uh, the maintainers, the framework authors. And if if you've got a application out there, then you want to make sure that your app is going to run really well on PHP seven, or run it all on seven. You know, the time is now. The the tools are out there, and it's kind of uh, one of the one of the things that I volunteered with for the uh, Go PHP seven extension stuff is to kind of correlate and, and maintain, or you know, pull together all of these different vagrant boxes. Uh, to help people test, whether it's Windows, whether it's Linux, uh, and I contributed to Rasmus's box to help kind of make it a little bit more out of run easier out of the box, 
and and that kind of stuff is, is what really is, is what kind of what people what makes it easier for people to get into it and and I think you know more to your your question of where what's the entry point I think the entry point is one of these vagrant boxes that they can go and they can you know vagrant up and they have a working version of PHP seven and then if they're so inclined and if they're you know if if they have no problem going and testing an extension you know that's 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 the entry point right there is getting one of these boxes running. Yeah, that's great. So the the virtual machine that you're talking about from Rasmus um, is the PHP 7 dev uh, virtual machine. So basically, you go on to you can go on a GitHub, clone this thing, and if you have uh, VirtualBox and Vagrant installed, um, then you you clone this uh, repo down and you type Vagrant up or something, uh, and then you're running on his box, right? The 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 virtual machine will will uh, load up on your machine, and then it comes with these really cool scripts um, that help you compile. Uh, and and switch versions of PHP. So um, there's two specific ones: new PHP and make PHP. Does anybody um, know much about what those scripts do, and how we can use them to kind of quickly run, like test things out on PHP seven? Uh, well, the new PHP one seems to switch versions, um, and the make PHP one is obviously from making. Like making from source. Now, I, now, does that make PHP actually download the latest source and compile it, or does it just compile whatever you have? I assume like new PHP it takes a version, and you know, I don't, but I'm not really sure. I haven't used it because I, I uh, haven't used the paper box. But, um, have you not used R Rasmus's box yet? No. Oh, okay. Because uh, you you already have your own way method of of compiling PHP, I, I would assume. <laughs> Yeah, nothing's actually changed. So if you know how to do it for five, you know how to do it for seven. So nothing's that nothing's actually changed there. But um, there's a video. Um, there's a there's a video, Rasmus part, and I, I watched that, and it just looked like um, new PHP changes the version of new PHP makes a new build. So pretty, it's pretty simple. Simple as vagrant up, isn't it? So. Yeah. Quickly skimming through the the make PHP command, I don't believe it pulls down source code, but I want to say I saw him mention something about one of the one of the commands would pull down source code. So maybe I'm just missing it. Lorna, I think uh, you started to say something, but it's uh, your volume is really low. Are you able to knock, up, kick up your it mic volume? Just a little bit? Yeah, it's better than before. Okay, um, how about better? I'm quite loud, so... Sorry, you're still kind of shady. <laughs> <laughs> is it... Um, it, it sounds like it might actually be a connection issue, like it's just sort of like back and forth a little bit, so... Yeah, um, I think actually my machine is struggling, running a load of stuff, so I'm just going to... Having changed my headset, I'm now just going to shut down some virtual machines while you talk about yourself. <laughs> That's hilarious. You're probably sitting there com running, like compiling 16 versions of PHP right now or something. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I always have to shut down my irony. VMs too. <laughs> the irony, exactly, exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, that probably is this, the issue. So um, there is actually a blog that just came out today. Rob Allen posted building and testing the upcoming PHP 7, and he talks a little bit more about how to use Rasmus's virtual machine. It talks more about the new PHP command, uh, make PHP command, but basically it allows you to switch between PHP versions, test out code, test out extensions, write tests for them, um, and just makes it a lot a lot faster to dive right into PHP internals if you've never worked with it before. And um, actually on the PHP, uh, go PHP 7-ext project, there's a lot of tips on how you can write tests and things like that. That's a really good entry point as well to... Um, p contributing a PHP source because PHP source isn't all p uh, just C because the tests are actually written in PHP. So if you don't even want to touch C, you can still contribute to source by writing tests uh, in PHP. So that's kind of cool. Um, and you can find out, um, once you go to that website, go to that extensions wiki and you'll be able to um, see everything that needs to, be ha needs to have a test written for it. Um, so uh, another point of the, PHP, the Go PHP 7 EXT project was to make extensions in real in general easier to install and use. And this is kind of cool because this is basically I think they're working on a composer for PHP extensions called Pickle, not to be confused with Peckle, which people call Pickle. Um, literally spelled Pickle, uh, spelled Pickle like you would eat a pickle. So it's a PHP extension installer. Does anybody um, have any info on Pickle and where it, where its status, the status of that is? You know. 
the way to actually say pickle is pickle. The logo <laughs> is a pickle. It is, it is. It genuinely is. I don't know why they called it pickle. It was called pickle already. Uh, anyway, um, I can't remember what I can't remember what I was going to say, but it is already called pickle. <laughs> Well, this this new project is called Pickle, and it's no, it's spelled no, Pickle. The current one is called Pickle. It's right. The logo is pickle. There's a pickle in the logo. In the Pickle logo has got a pickle in it. Totally, totally. So, but they're working on a new project called Pickle. I don't know if you've heard of this. Is that the, where you can install it? It's basically like Composer for for Pickle extensions. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's been a, a long time ago, I think. Sorry, sorry, Joe. On you go. It's a good idea, but there is a bit of a problem. Um, it's not actually going to change like the permission. You still need permissions to install extensions in most environments, so it's not really, it's not really going to be like Composer because Composer doesn't only needs permissions in the current directory, but it can't, you can't, um, you won't be able to say that you re you require an extension from a normal web project. And have the web server build and install an extension if it's not there, like Composer would. It won't work like that. It, it won't work like that. Um, it's just a, a fancier sort of interface and a, a nicer sort, of nice, nicer, nicer way of doing things, a nicer build description as well. But um, they're not really going to be. Um, there's been talk of like Composer integration, a tighter Composer integration, but it's not going to be as simple as it as it really. Sounds. You're still going to need administrative privileges to install extensions. So, it's just that to say. No, I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I mean, one of the one of the the goals of it is to have you to be able to def define your PHP extensions uh, and your composer file, and then have it install them for you. Obviously, when you give it the right permissions, you know it can ask for pseudo access or something like that. But um, yeah, it's just going to have all your dependencies in one area rather than having your PHP dependencies and then you've got to worry about system dependencies, it's kind of a bit more centralized. Yeah, it sounds like a really cool idea. I know there's still going to be technical implementation details that have to be worked out and things, but that's something that we'll probably be seeing coming down the pipe here pretty soon, especially when SPHP 7 becomes more popular. So something to kind of keep your finger on the pulse of as we, as we kind of move forward as a PHP community. Something always to... We don't change as much as JavaScript. That's a good thing. JavaScript changes their underwear every day. We only change it like once every three years. So, ten, um, ten years. <laughs> um, another point: of the PHP extension project. Get more uh, people involved in extension maintenance. Um, and Travis slash Avoyer running on all of them, killing off bugs and stuff. Um, so, if I look at this big list of extensions, and there's one that doesn't have a maintainer and I want to get involved and I want to over take an extension over and, and, and just maintain it. How do I go about that? Do I need to, is there some sort of form process I need to go through? Do I need to ask anybody or do I just, just do it? Uh, well, most, of my, most extensions don't really have a maintainer. Well, all the really popular ones, they have maintainers, but a lot of the core ones are sort of just written and then just left there. And the, the maintainers might be somewhere but they're not super interested. So if something's broken, just put in a pull request like normal, um, like like you would norm normally on on GitHub, and um, someone from internals will, will merge it the way it needs to be merged and stuff. But yeah, it's just like any other GitHub project. If you find a problem, make a pull request. So if I go ahead, uh, I mean just to follow up on that, really. The the active maintainers of PHP in general will, will pick up these extensions if they're you know kind of left to die and there's a need to keep them up to date or fix some 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 security bugs or some bugs in general then yeah sometimes the maintainers leave but and then just the, you know as guys just hanging around are just looking at it and say okay this extension needs some love or it needs some updating so it kind of gets it indirectly um, but if people want to raise bugs. It, even knowing about problems is, is a good start. You know, sometimes people are just looking around to f they don't really know what what to do or something that doesn't really interest them. So even just the more bug reports is is good. You know, on bugs.php.net or you know through the GitHub channels and stuff like that. Yeah, I was mostly talking about um, extensions on Peckle actually. The ones in core, 
yeah, the, the core maintainers will look after them. I think most of them have actually been updated to work with Seven by now. I think, um, but I'm not. Sh I'm not sure. Actually, um, but the ones on Peckle, that's a bit different. I mean, if they haven't had a release in the last sort of year or two, maybe you might have a bit, a bit of a difficult time finding the maintainer and then just put in a just put in a pull request on GitHub or where, wherever you can find one, or, or, or send a send a report in the bugs .php on there. And with a patch, and, and someone will, someone will probably pick it up. Um, I'm looking at the core extensions or extensions catalog um, at the core extensions here, and there's a lot of information has been gathered on it, but there's still a lot of missing information. So if you want to be like a superhero and start looking at these core extensions and gathering this information, and even making some of them work um, on PHP 7, because there's still quite a few that don't, including a very popular one, Datetime, um, apparently is not working on PHP 7. So um, poor Derek Reapens has already got his plate full with having to get Xdebug working on PHP 7, which I'm sure is the biggest, hugest thing that he's got to do coming up here. And having to fix date time as well is probably going to be hardcore. So um, definitely hit him up and see if like if he wants somebody to take out take over uh, the date time extension to to get it working on 7. But still, lots of opportunities to get involved on that, even in the core, which is really cool. Um, sorry, I lost my screen here. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna, there's, la there's last two things I want to talk about for the specific goals of the, P the Go PHP 7 extension project, and uh, one of them is to get more people writing documentations for the uh, extensions. Um, so, how how do we go about writing documentation for extensions? Oh, well, if they've got documentation already, um, you can use the online editor uh, edit.php.net. Um, you can sign into that with um, like Facebook and things like that, so you don't need a don't need a PHP account for that. Um, if they don't have documentation already, that's a little bit more complicated um, because someone needs to someone with permission needs to create um, the directory for their man, uh, for their manual stuff in in SVN. So sort of just show up on um, PHP doc doc on uh, Fnet and uh, make noise. <laughs> so it sounds like some of the, the better ways to get involved is still using um, IRC to, and getting in the right channels and asking the right people, right? Like, how do I get this? I need a Karma to do that and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's true. Can you hear me before I speak? Like? Yes, you, you're you're a little fuzzy, but you're you're much more. Audible. Okay. Yeah, uh, I found I had like five virtual machines running, so uh, maybe that was part <laughs> of the problem. <laughs> it's not the world's most powerful laptop, so oops. Um, yeah, I think IRC is a really good place to get involved because uh, we have a channel for the GoPHP 7 extension stuff. So everyone's kind of on the same page. I think Joe and I have been in there with a bunch of other people and seeing people asking questions, but then adding to our existing documentation. And we have got people with Karma hanging around in channel who have um, granted us things and advised on things and Rasmus answered a question on his box and stuff like that. So it's been really active and it's really, it's just, it's un unobtrusive. Do you know what I mean? Like you can easily just ask someone a question. If you want to ask Derek if you can take over the time he's hanging around in that channel. So um, you just chat. That's awesome. Yeah. Go ahead, Joe. You would definitely not allow anyone to take over date time. It's probably <laughs> just a matter of waiting for Derek there. I mean, everyone thinks that dates are really simple, but they're so not. It's no, really not. complicated. <laughs> and and, and um, he's an expert in it, and, and uh, we should just be patient <laughs> yeah. with, the, with, the, with the date time. So uh, fixing I mean, date time in PHP 7 is definitely not low-hanging fruit. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's not low-hanging fruit. Um, there, there's plenty of other, other stuff that's really low-hanging, but dates are really complicated. Um, so, you know, there's just that to say about that. Yeah. Okay. I, I was just going to say that, um, you know, like Lorna or Joe or anyone on the, the Go PHP 7 stuff, if you guys need someone with Karma to, to put in documentation stuff, you're more than welcome to hit me up on that, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll push it up for you. I'll commit it in. Or if anyone listening on the 
on, on this. Uh, if you find any bugs on PHP docs, usually just people notice the problem and then they go away. Uh, you know, tweet me or something like that or whatnot, and uh, you know, I'll be, I'll, I'll definitely get on that and we can, we can patch it up. It's, it's usually pretty instant. There's a, like Joe was saying, there's a edit.php.net. It's an online editor, so anybody can anonymously can lock, can go in and actually edit the files. And then you can just submit them for review, and then someone with uh, someone with access can go in and just approve your your changes too. It's kind of like GitHub, but before GitHub was really that big a thing. So there's a lot of it's, it is quite easy to to do it, but not that many people know about it. So I think it's definitely Sammy. I think it's definitely something you should put on the links at the end. Um, you know, linking to edit.php.net or pinging me for any documentation fixes that you want made or that you've made and you want me to push up for you. Absolutely. Yeah, there's lots of really cool uh, places and resources that we've been talking about that I, I want to definitely add to the show notes um, so that people can go to phproundtable.com uh, and, and, and get links to all these things, the blogs and the VM that we've been talking about and all that stuff. So it's a good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Edit.php.net. Um, so that would be documentation stuff. And last thing on uh, the Go PHP extension project um, that was kind of one of the goals is to codify the best practices of extension writing and design, a la PSR. So does that mean that we want like a a PS uh, like a fig group for PHP internals? Is that what is that what that's kind of saying? We've already got one. It's called internals mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the aim there is to kind of devolve that knowledge off the internals mailing list. Um, the internals mailing list is one reason probably second only to not knowing C, which keeps ordinary PHP developers away from getting involved in the project, because it's genuinely an unpleasant place to be. Um, but I think the idea of the GoPHP 7 project is to just be much more community focused, to take that information and to make it available to everybody, um, not just on the mailing list, but in an accessible form. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah, I, you're right about that. The PHP internals mailing list seems to get a lot of media attention, especially when there's the drama llama popping in there. Um, but interestingly, ever since I subscribed, um, I, I see one or two threads that, that are kind of drama entangled, but most of the stuff is just announcements of RFCs and and be, and people kind of doing code reviews, and nothing seems... And there's, there's not a lot of, um, you know, personal attacks outside of the drama llamas that exist that it's just a few bad apples but everybody talks about them and so it kind of seems like they get a lot of attention and, and people kind of get this idea of what the internals list looks like and it's not really the the majority of what goes on there I mean at least not in my experience I don't know if it's if it if it was more like that in the past uh, I second that view um, I think people only talk about negative stuff uh, only negative stuff is newsworthy um, most of the people involved in the internals list, when you talk to them on the internals list or in IRC, they're perfectly nice people. And uh, there are some conversations that get heated, but what you do is just um, ignore them. I mean, I never really, po I never really post on internals, but I, re I read, I try, try to read the important seeming stuff. But like you said, it's 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 one in sort of ten threads that goes, that goes, goes sort of. It makes a makes a drama and people start being personal and stuff, but it's not often really. So, so it's not so scary. scary. And it's not really, <laughs> uh, and especially especially all the people that talk on the internals list. I mean, they are just people, and they are just hanging around in IRC like like everyone else. And they're perfectly nice when when you talk to them in IRC or when you're on the list sometimes. Anywhere you get anywhere you get people disagreeing. I mean, if you've worked on something for 10 years and you disagree with someone else, you will argue about it until you are blue in the face, and uh, that's what happens sometimes. But it's kind of expected. It doesn't really matter where that conversation happens. It's going to happen like that occasionally, and you just sort of try and try and people are, even when people are going mad at each other, they're trying to say stuff, and you just try and pick pick out what they're trying to say and ignore the rest, sort of thing. So, there's just that to say about it. 
Yeah, so the, the, the moral of the story is go ahead and subscribe to PHP Internals if you've been afraid to because of the drama. Don't let that scare you away because there's a lot more going on than drama llamas popping in there. Um, but kind of going back on this idea of, 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 of making these best practices like the PSRs, um, are, there, are there any sort of like re um, proposals to have standards being proposed outside of the mailing list? Like, like an RFC process for or an RFC that submits an idea that says we should write extensions this way. Is that is there any been has there been any work on that yet? No, not really. I mean, the reason for that primarily is that we don't get that we don't get contributions that often. So we're kind of grateful to have them. So if you start putting barriers up there, then it's going to make that rejection process a lot. You know, do you know what I'm saying? Like, it, you know, for like PS, PSR stuff, it's people are submitting things all the time, like Symphony Project or Zend. So you can put some standards in there, but because there is a lack of people in PHP internals, that as soon as you get code and it's it's worthy and it runs and it's acceptable, you should just get it accepted and then cleaned up as a, a second second part, right? So you can't really was you can't really win there. In terms right. of like good 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 practice, there's a difference between best practices and good practices, right? I mean, best practices, you know, we all know what PSR artists, so if people kind of know that, but Best practices. There are good, good documentation out there for that. You know, uh, good, uh, like tutorials and, and blogs and stuff that people have put up. It would probably be good to put on the show notes. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've, we've got that. And there was a, a last point there, but I'll come back to you. I can't really remember what it was. Um, there is a. I'm not really sure what, what um you're asking. I mean. Internally, there's a coding standard, but if you're asking, are we going to adopt PSRs or the way PHP think, do things? I don't think so. Like it's meaning like reviewing extensions and common ways to do certain things. Oh, I remember the point I was trying to make. Sorry, it was um, if you're looking for best practices, if somebody's looking for best practices on writing PHP extensions, find a really good extension. Right, or find a core extension, something that's maintained actively with a lot of the core contributors, right? Like SPL, right, or something that's made its way into core. Look, look there, because um, you know this, that's getting a lot of attention. There's a lot of people are working on that, so that's my advice to people if they want to look for best practices: is look at core extensions, and these will probably get higher quality than other things on the fringes. Yeah. And hopefully, Lorna can help with the. Uh, Maybe bubbling that information out of the code and out of the internals land up into user land a bit, bit easier. You know, it's a bit difficult if you're already in that in that land. You don't really need to get it up because you're already there. But the most of the community are not there already, so it's good that Lorna and others are trying to get this surfaced a bit better. Yeah, definitely. I think we're not inventing it, but I think we can say, oh, this is a really good example, or um, oh, if you want to build an extension that does this, then you should look at the one that wraps you know, the middle of the library but doesn't meet your needs. Um, it's not that the guidance isn't there, it's that it's a little bit more difficult. PHP has a really small um, kind of central core community and then a massive user land community. So more communication between the two, and then the work is done, really. Um, the knowledge exists. And to bring it out into more approachable ways, I think, is awesome. Um, but the thing that I really like will happen for extensions is that Sarah will update her book. She keeps threatening, so if we just, just all keep telling her that it's going to happen, maybe it will. <laughs> well, Elizabeth Smith uh, just kind of confirmed what we've been talking about and said that the problem is documentation more than anything, not necessarily creating a standards body. So um, once I guess it sounds like once we just kind of get documentation on how to even do document, how to even write extensions on PHP 7, so that's kind of like the biggest kind of hurdle. Now there is some documentation out there. I've seen some, but it just—I I guess the push is to try to get that more comprehensive, um, and kind of doing more um, hardcore things with with PHP internals. So if you already know, if you're already in PHP internals, let's uh, let's get that documentation ready. <laughs> get get on it. Um, so uh, do you guys have any um, advice for anybody who wants to start contributing to PHP internals? Like, um, I'm actually, by the way, before I actually ask that question, Colin O'Dell had a question on Twitter 
and he said, let's, let's say I got an idea f uh, for an RFC. How would I go about proposing it? Like, what help is available to assist in that process? Does anybody want to take that on? Um, well, um, recently, quite a few RFCs have been discussed quite heavily in, um, on Stack Overflow, room, room 11. Um, there's like Anthony hangs around there and Nikita and Bob and Lee and Levi and uh, Sarah and um, some other people. Um, so we've got a, we've got like a group of us to bounce ideas off. If you've got an RFC you wanna you wanna sort of flesh out and and talk about, I, I would suggest you come come to us and we'll be happy to do that. Um, officially. Like there isn't there isn't really any help with um, RFCs. People just sort of do them, or they get together with a couple of other people and do them together, and they just write them. But but we find when when there's a group of us, we we all come up with the arguments that you will meet if you want to if you want to actually take your RFC forward and try and merge a patch. So it's helpful to have. Um, a few people in one place, and when you go in the IRC, um, it's not that active. It just the not uh, just the normal um, peckle IRC rooms, not not super active, and um, we are every day. So um, uh, I, I, that's that's probably a good 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 place to go. So uh, the actual RFCs are located on wiki.php.net/rfc. And which is just a wiki, basically a wiki page that allows you to edit the. Uh, if you have Karma, of course, you have to you have to be able to have Karma in order to to edit this page. But basically, that's where the, all the RFCs exist and where you where they go into different phases like under discussion and draft mode. But before you even do that, um, for for me, um, Anthony Ferrara was the one who helped me along on this one a lot too. I mean, him and uh, like a hundred other people, but him specifically was saying. Um, I had this idea that I want to add pseudo random bytes. So what do I do? And he said, well, I recommend just creating a user land example of what you want to do. Just write it in PHP. What do you want to do? Get get the API all set up and everything in GitHub. Uh, set, push it on GitHub. Throw it around to some random people. Go into like random chat rooms where other PHP are, people are and see get some feedback. And then once you have something like that and people, you get like enough feedback, then go into the um, the wiki page and submit um, an RFC. Uh, but in order to do that, you need RFC, you need Karma. So I think what I had to do was go into like an IRC channel and ask for Karma from somebody. I think a good place to start, though, is this one that keeps coming up is the Go PHP extension RFC. And I'll try to link that in the show notes as like a place you can go and ask questions. Well, there is an official way to request Karma, um, but before you get it, you need to have like um, uh, contributed some documentation or something like that, or, or have an intention to do something ma major. Do you know what I mean? Um, so the, the official way to do it is um, there's a uh, we'll put it in the show notes. There is a uh, link on php.net uh, to request VCS access. Uh, I don't remember it right now, but I will find it and we'll put it in the show notes. Cool. Yeah, send me that link. I'll add it to the show notes. Um, and once you get Karma, you add your RFC. Um, it goes from it goes into you can set up one in like draft mode. Just make sure it's all good. Then you announce it on the internals list. You're like, hey, here's my uh, my RFC. Um, let's discuss it. And like, you discuss it for about two weeks. And then after the discussion, you get feedback and you change it. And it goes into a voting phase. And then um, that lasts for about two weeks, and people can vote yay or nay. And then there's there's some that are more complicated, and they can break them up into features and like yay on this feature, nay on that feature, that kind of thing. And then once you get uh, enough votes um, for your RFC, if you if you do, then it gets accepted, and then you've got to you actually got to pull you know your actual implementation in. And with mine, I actually uh, me and Lee had written our implementation, so we have a pull request that's sitting there waiting, so that people can actually look at the code and give us feedback while the RFC was in voting phase. So I think it's a uh, I think depending on what you're wanting to do, um, that that process can get more or less complicated. Ours was pretty simple; it was just a wrapper for something. And that's Elizabeth Smith has a talk on writing uh, to writing extensions on PHP. 
Uh, and her, her advice was to start with something that's sort of a wrapper of a C library. Instead of like thinking about, like, I'm going to override all these operators with that happen within PHP, start with something that's kind of low-hanging fruit. Or just find a C library that would be really useful in PHP and then write a, a wrapper API for it in user land. And that's kind of basically what me and Lee did for pseudo-random bytes. It's kind of, not really, but kind of what we did, basically. So that was a great entry point. I'm talking way too much as the host. I need to stop that. Um, final thoughts. Does anybody have any advice on anybody who wants to start contributing to PHP internals? I think uh, as, as a relative internals newcomer that my, my advice would be to find find what interests you and kind of what was my, my gateway to internals was uh, PHP mentoring on Freenode, which is a whole other initiative of just finding pairing up mentors and, and mentees with people, and that's kind of where I, I look, that was my lead in to, to internals. And it doesn't necessarily have to be everybody's, uh, but that's that's a good place to start if you're looking for something to do or if you're looking for, uh, you know, something to contribute to. That That's, you know, I see stuff all the time happening and, and getting kicked off uh, there, so uh, that that's definitely one entry point. Nice. Anybody else got any um, words for anybody trying to, to start contributing to PHP internals? <laughs> Joe's nodding his head. I'm yeah. looking at Joe wondering what he's doing. Sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't get my mouse to work to get to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I got stuff um, to say, but I can't unmute myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would just say, I would just say um, to people who want to get involved to... Um, just do it. Just, just, just start reading whatever you're interested in. Even if you don't know C, it won't look totally foreign to you, um, and you don't need to know it to be to be helpful. Um, someone said earlier, just knowing that there is a problem is helpful, and uh, it is. Uh, it means it means you've saved someone else time, and and you you've pushed them forward as well because someone's much more likely to go and fix a problem if you know what the problem is. Than, than they are go searching around for problems. Um, so yeah, just just pick something that you're interested in, something your project relies on, or whatever, and and start having a look. Yeah. I think I would I would give the, the same advice that I would give to um, getting involved in an open source project. It's about finding something that you want to fix, and whether that is um, you're going to fix something that's incorrect in the documentation or missing, um, whether you're going to take the... This is a really good time to kind of get into extensions and how you compile PHP, because we have Go, PHP 7, and lots of kind of documentation, lots of people chatting on that topic. But if that isn't really what you're interested in, I think Joe's recommendation of PHP mentoring is a really good one. Um, looking for people who maybe are already excited about something and could lend a hand, but lets you try something out without having to necessarily take on a huge commitment um, and just as you first get involved. So it's about pushing yourself outside of what you're already comfortable with and finding something that probably you can't do, but that you will, are going to work through and accept some help to be able to. That's some great advice. And if you can't do it, and you can't do it, just keep pushing. Just get ready to submit the hours of uh, just sitting there and pushing at it. That's for it's great advice. Um, I, we're is, we're getting kind of close to needing to wrap up here. Uh, so before we start wrapping up, I just wanted to ask you guys um, if there's any new features of PHP seven that you're particularly excited about. Yes, the Zend engine. Why are you excited about the Zend engine? Just because it's much better, um, it's much faster. But not only that, it's actually more pleasant uh, to write with, and uh, everything's sort of a little bit better and sh sort of shiny and new, and it's, and it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I probably second that. No, <clears throat> it's uh, it's much cleaner. Like I said, we, we took this opportunity to to clean things up, give Fed the engine some priority, and and that, but that's really not a feature that most people will see. So, in terms of feature, I'd probably say return values from functions. 
I'm not talking about scalar type hints. I'm talking about being able to just say this function will return an instance of user entity or something. That's that's big. That's massive because IDEs use uh, you know uh, static analysis and, and inspection to to figure this stuff out or uh, you have PHP docs to compensate for the lack of this in the language. So um, having that baked into the language will give you error catching much earlier and just easier for IDEs to just type in your code. So for me, there, there's many features, but I think that one's going to help help myself and help a lot of other people. Oh, if we're talking about features that people see, I'll say, I would say strict, um, the strict mode. I would say uh, that some people have probably been waiting two decades for that. So, but that's that's quite cool. I think for me, the killer feature has to be the speed. Um, and this is funny because, you know, people are messing around with the early versions of PHP. And talking about it, and I was like, "Oh, all the internals people are just in a gibbering wreck about how fast it is." Um, but I can't tell you anything else about it. Well, <laughs> not it's sufficiently whole that I have it and have it compiled, and I've done the first few benchmarks. Oh, it's really fast. I'm not releasing any benchmarks until we go alpha or maybe beta, but it's really fast. Go definitely on, what do you need one to? <laughs> well, I'm just gonna wait for beta, but. I'm probably not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, do you, uh, Ferguson, do you have any uh, features that you're particularly excited about? Yeah, I think I think uh, the well, the one that I'm excited about that hasn't been talked about already is the uh, the spaceship operator for combined yeah. combined comparison is is really cool. It's one of those things that until you've ever needed it and not had it, it it's kind of a, oh well, that's no big deal, but. Uh, I've run into a couple of unique situations where that would have been helpful, so it, it'll be nice to have that in seven. What what situations um, specifically have you found it more helpful? Uh, well, I would have been able to. So one of the applications that that I've written for our local hackerspace is for is an authentication app. And long story short, there's a really bad authentication scheme happening for it, and it's okay because it's uh, it's relatively proprietary. So there's not this big uh, security issue with the with using this bad authentication scheme and how we have to compare uh, password strings or security strings uh, would have been helped with the with the combined comparison versus a lot of nested ifs or a lot of different comparisons written out. So uh, the the combined comparison would have made it a little bit easier to read and easier to understand the logic. Uh, instead, right now we just have this kind of spaghetti mess of authentication. But you know that's a that's a very unique kind of edge case scenario, so. Cool. Spaceship Outer Operator looks really awesome, so highly recommend checking that out if you haven't heard about it yet. Um, so sweet. Let's um, wrap this thing up with the developer shout-out, because this is a segment that recognizes a developer that has contributed a lot to the community, and we'd just like to give them an awesome yay, thank you um, for their contributions, and we have an official sponsor for this developer shout-out, and that is Laracasts.com, and they've been super gra gracious in providing a $50 Amazon gift card to recognize this developer for this episode, and Laracast, if you don't know, is the Netflix for developers, and if you're listening to PHP Roundtable because you're trying to learn more about PHP, then you'll love Laracasts. Um, the guy who runs it, Jeffrey Way, has a ton of screencasts showing you step-by-step -step how to do some really cool stuff in PHP, so definitely check that out. I am personally a subscriber and have learned tons from it, so it's really super awesome. So for this episode, I asked the panel to nominate someone who has helped developers get more involved in contributing to PHP internals, and they said the guy they, they want to nominate is Anthony Ferrara. So uh, super great nomination because he's helped me a lot um, personally. Um, why Joe? Do we talk, Joe Watkins or Joe Joe Ferguson? Sorry, you were the one who. Or you both said good. Great, everybody said great things, but <laughs> Joe Ferguson, you said something specifically. Um, why do we? Why did you guys nominate uh, Anthony Ferrara for this episode? Uh, for me specifically, I've, I've uh, he was the one that kind of helped me get into internals and, and kind of give me the uh, the yeah you can really do this this isn't this isn't too hard so uh, that kind of uh, motivation to to get in there and and sign up for to do things is is really what uh, kind of pushed me into it. 
Nice. Yeah, so super um, super involved with getting, like, mentoring people in, um, including myself. So thank you, Anthony, for everything that you're doing for this community. Um, and so as a thank you, we're sending you a $50 Amazon gift card um, as a little token um, of our gratitude on behalf of Laircast.com and the panel uh, of guests on this episode. And I'll be sending, a th sending you a thank you note um, uh, with the gift card in it, and a couple of awesome PHP Roundtable stickers, which just came in the mail the other day. Um, so I've got a little bit of a backlog on the developer shoutouts. I, I've got some cards. I've been waiting on these stickers to come in so I can send these out. So if you've been nominated in past episodes and haven't gotten your gift card yet, don't worry. It's coming in the mail. Probably by next week I'll get them in the mail. Um, but they're really cool, super awesome stickers from Sticker Mule. So um, anyways, uh, Anthony, I'll be getting in contact with you about getting this card in your hand. And to close it up, um, let's get some shameless plugs going. Joe Watkins, do you have anything that you uh, want to shamelessly promote? Just PHP. If you're going to do anything this year, make it PHP. <laughs> That's appropriate. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> what about you, Paul? You got anything you want to promote? Um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I spend a lot of my time past four or five years of working on a, it's like a project called PPI Framework. And essentially, that's a, it's a kind of child project of Symfony and Zend. Basically, we combine, we, we take out what makes those frameworks really good, but throw away a lot of the larger bloat and come up with, basically we came up with a framework that consists of the good parts of both frameworks. Um, and the, the, the goal of the project is to make the um, to make to make mod modules interchangeable. So you could have a one, one module you could have Laravel for your routes and uh, you know uh, and for templating but on another module you could have say Symphony routes and Symphony templating this, this type of approach. So we're pretty close to that goal. Um, but we need a lot of we need a, lot, a bunch of help. We get help from the core core guys on the projects, the Symphony and Zen projects. But it's it's, it's difficult, uh, you know. So uh, yeah, PPI framework is ppi.io or um, uh, on GitHub. It's just GitHub slash PPI. So thanks. Awesome, sweet. Thanks so much, uh, Lorna. You got anything you want to promote? Sure. Um, I think I, I may have mentioned once or twice in passing the Go PHP 7 extensions initiative. Um, this really is aimed for everybody, so if you're thinking of getting involved and you would like a friendly on-ramp, then that is a project you should definitely get involved with. The rest of the time, um, thankfully I only work part-time, because <laughs> otherwise I'm not sure how my open source activities would fit. Um, I'm a project lead over at Joined In. So if you've attended any PHP conferences, you probably gave the speakers some feedback. That site is undergoing a huge renaissance. We have mobile apps, API backend, brand new web front end. So if you are looking for a user land project, you can find us in join.in on Freenode. Um, we're too cool for an E, so we're joined without the E.in. Mm. Um, and then other stuff I want to promote, well, I have a few books out. You can I, right, so what you should do is go to my site, LornaJane.net. I recently reformatted my footer so I could fit all my books and videos and stuff in there. So just if there's anything that looks interesting, then I should be good at marketing and plug those things and tell you to buy stuff. So that was it. <laughs> Sweet. Um, yeah, so the books on LornaJane.net, I'll have a, I'll have some links on that on the show notes um, so people can check that out. Thanks. Um, and uh, Joe Ferguson, you got anything you want to promote? Uh, Nomad PHP. I'm actually the host for the Lightning Talks that we do before the U.S. meetings every month. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Nomad PHP, it is the PHP user group for people who don't have local user groups. Uh, it's not meant to be a, a substitution for your local user group, but it's uh, PHP speakers who give uh, a talk every, every month. We do two uh, talks. We do one for the U.S. crowd at 8 o'clock, and we do one, uh, 8 o'clock Central Time. We do another talk um, for the EU in the evening uh, time as well. Uh, so we do two uh, speakers every month, and I host the, the lightning talk portion, which is just a 10-minute quick talk on a subject, uh, and we put those out on YouTube for free. So uh, if you're interested in giving a lightning talk, please send me an email, uh, joe at nomadphp.com. 
Awesome. Thanks so much, buddy. I uh, love Nomad PHP. It's it's super super great, super awesome. You and uh, Cal Evans and um, is it bunch bunch of Nashville PHP people do that, right? Uh, it's Cal and Kathy that that are the primary ones that do it. I just do the the lightning talk portion, and then I stand in as Cal as needed. Sweet, awesome. Well, um, our next episode is um, uh, probably going to be an F8 Facebook Developer Conference Afterglow episode, which uh, will be in replacement of the failed live episode that we are going to try to do at F8. Uh, long story short, um, we kept postponing the date to or the time so that everybody could do it, and then we postponed it to postponed it to the end when security started like wrapping up everything and kicked us out, and we had no place to do it, and people were gone, and it was just a disaster, and everything ended up happening. So uh, we got people. Uh, one or two people from Facebook who's going to be joining us uh, for the Afterglow and just kind of talk about what went down and anything that uh, PHP nerds care about um, for F8. Um, so if you have something you'd like to share uh, on the PHP Roundtable, like a topic idea, just hit me up on Twitter. Uh, I'm Sammy K. That's my Twitter handle. Or you can ping the PHP Roundtable. We'd love to get ideas um, for future episodes. Um, thank you so much, Joe Watkins, Paul, Lorna, and Joe Ferguson for joining in on this discussion, and we'll see you guys for the next episode. Cheers. Thank